it's all fill and it's only two feet deep. And it's been one of those. They have, in past years, we've had a name for them. We call them the foot a year club. <laughs> it just, it seems to grow like tops here in Amoeba. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are. Here so we I, are. I think we have to be a little critical and, you know, and, and making sure that they have everything uh, in order before we actually uh, start to, you know, think about a vote on this. Yeah. I agree. So. So I don't believe we need to make any sort of motions on it. We just carry it to next month. Well, when we have we to make a motion to, a, to, to accept, accept it. it. I'm sorry. But other than that, <laughs> I believe that's where it, that's where it ends. Really? You want to Mr. Fay, a motion to accept the application. A second. Thank you very much. Um, all in favor of accepting Aye. the application? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Staff report. Um, I'm going to pass these out. Oh, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> this is for, are you all familiar with the East Campus parcel where FedEx currently sits? All right. So back in 2013, uh, we had, or Inland Wetlands had approved an application. Can you pass those? No, there should be two there. Let me get these passed out first before I start talking. Okay, so in 2013, Inland Wetlands approved an application of Stratford Development Corporation uh, to build a 500,000 square foot facility on East Campus. Uh, along Lordship Boulevard, currently where the FedEx facility is. Uh, during the uh, time that that uh, application was, or not that, no, the application was um, accepted, a permit was issued. After the permit was issued, Stratford Development Corporation came back and said, we're going to be reducing our building size, we're just going to have the FedEx facility, it's going to be just better than 200,000 square feet. So the current site has a facility on it, the FedEx facility, that's 200,000 square feet. Now they're coming back again and want to re-up the amount of storage on the site. So they're going to be building, or they're proposing to put another building in and they'll be getting back up to that originally proposed 500,000 square feet or closer to it. The interesting thing about this though is that they've already built the stormwater uh, retention system um, to complete capacity for the site so it already will be able to store any runoff uh, that's generated by this new building. It'll all be directed to storm management structures that are already in place and the entire lot is already impervious surface. So we're not creating any new impervious surface. It's really a matter of this building is going to have storm drainage structures that are going to be um, connected to the system that exists currently. Um, I'm only presenting the application now because I wanted you to be able to take a look at it and give me your thoughts on how you think they should proceed with the application, wh whether it should come in as an entirely new application or whether we can modify the existing application. In my opinion, I believe that they could come in for a modification under their existing application. We had already approved them for a structure that was 500,000 square feet in size with all the appropriate drainage that they've already come in and had accepted by the commission. And we already have the appropriate conditions um, on their permit for building these structures and properly managing any effluent coming off of them. So in my opinion, I, I believe it's appropriate for, um, for the applic applicant to come in for a permit modification. And if you look at the plans, uh, what they're showing you is where the proposed uh, uh, warehouse will be. So let's see. That's just in front of the front. 
Yeah, it's going to be directly along Lordship Boulevard, so that's where the new facility will be. The FedEx facility is further off to the west. I'm trying to see if I thought they had Tina, a good. Tina, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I think maybe mine shows it color coordinated. Is there any way you can see um, the positioning of the original uh, granting of the 500,000 square foot building? Yeah, here actually, this one shows it much better. I. Sorry. So the first facility that was proposed is this area right here. It's this purple square. It says former proposed industrial warehouse, 530,000 square feet. What they ended up with was this small rectangle right here. Well, relatively small. Rectangle right here, 225,000 square feet. So now that's what's existing as the FedEx Is it in facility. the same footprint as the original building? Um, not in the same footprint. It's a little bit more towards uh, the, the road. But um, in total, can you show 60, it on here? Yeah, about 60 some feet. So, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit closer to the road. But um, overall, it's not going to be any more impervious surface than was permitted for the 530,000 square feet. It really is kind of just... So this is separate from the puzzles. FedEx um, facility? It, it will be a separate it facility. It has nothing to do with FedEx at all? As far as I know, it has nothing to do with FedEx at all. I believe it's going to be offices. Don't quote me on that. We can certainly ask the applicant when they make the application. Or I, I could reach out to him. I don't think it would be a problem. He's been very forthcoming. No. If, if we modify this, are you going to have them come in so there's going to be a Q&A? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Do you, do you know if there was a bond on the original application? I'm almost positive there was a bond. I'm not sure if it had been returned right. yet. Well, that's right. We're going to go. I'm not sure. I'll look into that. Let one, me write that the, down, actually. Yeah, sir. One of the yeah. things we're going to have to start to re-review is the use of bonds for some of these applications because they're very useful. Oh, what's his name? Yes. Yeah, no it kind of gets them off the pot and yeah, he's a good guy. keeps them on the straight and narrow. Yeah, can I borrow a pen? Sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, just to uh, review that, we, they um, take a look at the sheet you have that you've been handed. <clears throat> And what we'll do at the next meeting is try to figure out if this is just going to be a modification of the original permit. It's, it's kind of just a technicality more than it is anything else because they're going to, uh, there are going to be new conditions, obviously, on the permit that are going to be site-specific. Um, I, I don't know in either case whether we either lose or gain by, you know, just making a modification, but... I guess it kind of sounds easier to the applicant that it's a modification rather than going through the whole dog and pony show. But I mean, the hydrology <clears throat> is, is going to be significantly different from those two buildings. I know they have everything in place, but I think I, what I would like to, I would feel more comfortable about is if they addressed how this modification affects the storm drainage and how they ha handle that. Now, normally, Stratford Development or whatever the um, yeah, Stratford Development Stratford Development Company um, usually are the owners of, of the building, and they lease them to the individual companies. Um, so that's going to be, you know, in the application, who's going to be the manager if things start to go sour? Is it going to be the the tenant, or is it going to be Mr. Mr. Casey of Stratford Development? So those are things we're still going to have to have answered. And, Agreed. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we, there's no action, I guess, on this. No right? action. It um, was just to bring it to your attention. Just, and just a question that I have, especially of Tina. Um, what difference? Are, actually, what impact are we concerned with uh, in terms of the location of the building to existing wetlands? W w where is our impact here? Uh, the wetlands, I believe. Does it show it on this map? Well, they're right, they're they're right next to the wetlands, and actually, they've actually made man-made man water courses. Correct. <laughs> it's a water course. They it's made, the one that ran along Lordship Boulevard. They made water courses to 
the wet one is right there. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I remember what it was. I just want to know if, if this is still the same, you know, uh, in terms of impact. Yes. The, the same type of impact. It would be having the same they're, type they're, of impact. They're not going to fill or they're not going to, you know, change anything in terms of, uh, no, the you know, what, has already it's been it was mainly the drainage area and that culvert or whatever you want to call it along Archie Boulevard. Correct. They, they've already brought the site to grade. They've already created these. They're pretty much a drainage ditch, really. right? They've already created those, um, so they're just going to be tying into what's already there. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Yep. And, they, and they technically have created their own regulated area by putting those. Yes. Right. Right. So, right. I mean, like Bill said, technically their whole building or a good portion of their building is in the setback area. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that drainage is adequate for the foot. Yep. According to the engineer, what he told me, yes. Um, but you know, that's why we're going to have them come in and. We'll go through all of that through the permit modification process or new permitting process, whatever you decide. So I want you to the grill plans. them on that. Then. <laughs> review the plans and if let me know what you think at the next meeting. We can make a decision on how to proceed, and then at the meeting after that. So I guess it would be October by then. Um, we could have the applicant come in and speak. Very good. Um, for. Oh, continuing with staff report. This is just a note. Um, I've been talking with um, Jeffrey Shamus. He works for Dewberry, um, and he's a, a, a wetland ecologist. And I had been speaking with him about possibly giving me a little bit of a field tutorial in uh, wetland science and how to properly delineate a wetland. Um, so I was going to be working with him uh, to find a day where I go out for about half a day and work with him to delineate wetlands and also identify um, different species of wetland plants just so I can familiarize myself with it. So I didn't know if any of you would be interested in joining in for that. I think it would be a really good opportunity. Do you know when? Yes, I do. And he said to say hello to you, Bill. <laughs> did, did you pick a date yet or are you still working? No date has been confirmed. If this is something that you guys want to participate in, we could talk about it. Um, I can give you guys a call if it's something that you're interested in doing. Or email us and see if you I have a tentative date. Will. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good idea. And uh, the price at this point is kind of negotiable, so I'll talk and see what we can do. Um, I might eventually have to make a motion to um, perhaps draw from our funds for this fiscal year to, to pay him for those services. But we might have enough in educational monies from Public Works to cover it. I'm not really sure how that'll play out yet, but I think it's a really good opportunity. So I'll keep you. It seems like everyone's pretty much in favor. So I'll keep you in the loop with uh, making that that date. Just for your other trip. gentleman's information, Mr. Shamus was the Stratford Wetlands agent some years ago. He worked with them. He's very, he's, very, <laughs> he's very familiar with the town. Um, oops, I lost my page. I did have one item for administrative permits. Uh, permit 2016-8A. This was an administrative permit I issued, excuse me, for installation of an above ground pool in an upland review area of Pumpkin Ground Brook Watercourse. Um, it was on Cut Spring Road. It was, I, I want to say something like 200 or 250 feet away from the watercourse itself. Um, I know the setback area for Pumpkin Ground Book, Brook is a bit longer than the rest of um, the watercourses in town, but this was just a simple placement of the above ground pool. I, um, I spoke with the applicant. There was going to be no sort of filling in any wetlands. He was literally just plopping the pool on his property with a small amount of gravel. Now, the, wet one, the, wetlands on Cut, on, the wetlands on Cut Spring Road go quite a ways up. Mm -hmm. and one of the problems is that a lot of the people think that's at their, their property. Are we sure about his rear yard property line? I am sure. Okay. Yep, I looked it all up. The other thing, problem we have when we're that close to wetlands or a water course with swimming pools are the swimming pool discharges. Yes. Has he addressed that? I spoke with him and I gave him, there's actually a, um, a document issued by the state that 
tells you how to properly deal with your uh, drainage of the pools at the end of the season. So in the administrative permit, we're going to say that it must be compliant with those regulations. Mm. I honestly, I can't remember if it was a part of it. Okay. I'll talk to him. Maybe we can remind him. Yeah, I think <laughs> I want to say it was in there. I do think it was. And I spoke with him regarding it. So I don't believe it'll be an issue, but I will talk to him. Okay, very good. Moving on, um, Commissioner's Forum. Mr. Hoyde. Yes, I would like to um, voice my personal opinion on an issue that has come before the town uh, during the proceedings of the 70 plus affordable housing project up on James Farms Road. Uh, it was voiced by one, mainly one, of the town council members that um, she was disappointed in the amount of support that the Stratford Inland Wetlands Commission has given to the residents that are opposing this. And I would just like to say that um, if you don't know what you're talking about, don't say anything. Because we were directed by a judge, Judge Radcliffe, after proposing all our uh, concerns in terms of our upland wetlands um, setbacks and, uh, and the impact on the, on the lowlands wetlands. And he felt that we did not have a standing in this application. And we're being criticized that we're not supporting the people in the North End. And that's not true. Um, we do support them, but as a commission, we can't. We can't say anything because we were directed by a judge that we have no standing. So if you really don't know what you're talking about, don't make statements during a, town, during a public hearing. That's all I ask. Thank you. I might add that this has been before the Conservation Commission as well. And the, uh, the Conservation Commission, has been very critical of, of some of the activities that are happening on that piece of property. And again, they, uh, they have no say, but they have talked to some of the public. To, um, I have a comment too for Mr. Fay in relation to his concern about the gross tree removal in the town of Stratford. It, we brought it up at the Conservation Commission. It was brought to my attention by Mr. Yem, who is, is, is he historical um, commission? Or, it, mm -hmm. And he, he sent a couple of articles in uh, that have been in the paper in past years in relationship to how the utility companies try to uh, lengthen the time between maintenance just for economic purposes. One of the conservation commissioners, um, the, the, actually we had a very heated conversation <laughs> at, at that meeting. <laughs> and um, what happened was a, a, one of the commissioners volunteered to write a letter, which was an excellent letter, criticizing the activity of the tree removal. It was also um, recognized that the way it was done uh, was certainly only self-serving to the utility company. It did nothing for the aesthetics or the quality of the neighborhood in terms of a, a, a beautiful tree as a result. Um, also, the fact that the town is going to be ending up with a Although we're not taking the trees down, we are doing most of the cleanup, the stump removal and the large things. And that was recognized by the commission too, that they've taken these things down and left their junk behind and walked away. And that was part of the, the comments uh, to the administration about the, how they were critical of, of this operation. Uh, subsequently, it, we, um, well, me being the former tree warden, um, 
I have a, obviously a very pointed opinion about how this should be handled over the years. They wanted, years ago, they wanted to do a 15 to 20 year maintenance and we held them to a five year maintenance plan. Sadly, I mean, it's, it's somewhat reflected in, in, a, in a bill, but it's, it's still, it's, huh? Yeah, it's exactly. There's such a, the opinions on this, it runs the gamut. Some people are so glad to see these trees go and they're just like, please get them off my property. Well, not that it's their property, but get it out of the way. I don't want this tree falling on the power line. I'm on oxygen. If this tree falls down on my power line and I'm without power, I could die. So I understand a lot of times where these people are, are coming from when they give because every abutting property owner has to, is given a form that says whether they object to tree removal or pruning and what they would suggest otherwise. So if the abutting property owner says to you, I, okay, I have no problem with you removing my tree, then I understand exactly. where you're coming from. Yeah, that's, I understand right. exactly where you're coming from. However, if that tree were eventually to fall down on a power line during a storm event, cuts off power to 2,000 people, everyone's going to look back at it and say, why didn't the town allow this tree to come down? Mm -hmm. And I understand why people would be upset by that, especially people who love trees, because I'm one of them too. I do. I understand where it'd be coming from. Say this again? What other towns are they doing this in? 17 other towns. Whoever you I every town under UI jurisdiction. I know Trumbull's doing it, Shelton, Ansonia. I, I live in Trumbull and I saw it happening myself on Edison Road. You can go up so, there. And those trees weren't noticed either. I'm on Elm Street where I live. Mm -hmm. I can figure on them coming down and cutting down a hundred six foot diameter sycamores that are 150 feet tall because they can fall out of power. Well, all I could say is hopefully that in those situations, the property owners that are abutting objected to it, and I believe many of them did. Elm Street was well, supposed to be a divided highway. Right. So the, so the, ones that are in the property same. owners are so far away from the tree, they're 100 feet away from the tree, right. because the planting strip is 100 feet wide on the it. west side of Elm yeah. Street. And this brings up another point, and I don't know why it's like this in Stratford. It's, I haven't seen it this way in a lot of other communities, but our planting strips are just so tiny. It's about four feet wide. So we have these huge trees that are surrounded, literally blocked in by a sidewalk on one side, pavement, road on the other, utility line right above it. Like these trees are, were doomed from the beginning. It's really guess what? hard. We live in New England. It's supposed to be legal. I know, but however, if you go down Main Street in Trumbull, if you go into the Nichols area of Trumbull, their planting strips are minute. They're tiny. You can't even get a tree in there in the first place. Not to mention, when they do have large trees, it's on the opposite side of the power lines. So they're not experiencing a lot of these same issues that we are. It's very, very unfortunate. And another thing I learned was that PURA, the Public Utilities Regulatory Agency or Authority, whatever the acronym is, they're the ones who said after Hurricane Sandy, Here's $112 million UI. Please go out and make sure that we don't have any large scale loss of power like we saw for Hurricane mm -hmm. Sandy. And so UI is going out to do these trimmings and prunings and removals. And so get this, if you object to any of these removals of trees, you have to go back to Pura. So it would be heard, the hearing on a specific tree that you were um, objecting to removal would have to be heard by Pura, the same entity that wanted and was pushing for removal of it in the first place. So all this so overrides all the town ordinances about putting a, a, a notice up, leaving it up there for two weeks before. When it, comes to, when it comes to the noticing, it says, if you read the regulations, it's the trees moved at the tree warden's discretion that are under the tree warden's discretion to be removed have to be noticed. If the tree is not being removed as per the tree warden, in this case it's not, it's being removed by UI, 
it does not fall on the tree warden to post the notice. No, I, 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 and I, I that can exception. be that can be. No, the tree warden. And, and, uh, again, we've we've had this we've had this discussion before. Yep. It can't be right. The UI would. If the UI had their way, there would not be a tree within 500 feet of a power. That's true. But and, and I agree. With you. We, we, and that came up at the commission that the the proper protocol. And by the way, we have a new tree warden. That tree warden has been dismissed, and we have a new tree warden. Um, but he yeah. is now the tree warden. Um, but again, the, the, one of the things that was recognized by the commission. Want me to get arrested for taking some branches off the tree in front of my house because I didn't have the proper authorization from the town of Stratford. Well, he's right. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. We had a lot of applications. Um, you know, I've been on this commission for 20 something years. Okay. We've had a lot of applications in violations where homeowners have done, you know, tree trimming on their own property and did not get um, authorization from the tree warden. And we penalized them, we made them replant and everything else. Um, in this instance, it's just a blatant clear cut. I mean, you know, how do they get away with it? How do they get away so with it? So we have a historic district with historic homes and mature trees because it's historic and they've been there for a long time. But do you like to make it look like desperate housewives? No trees. Yeah. Well, you got to hope that in that section, the abutting property owners will be smart enough to take what's given to them by UI and, and voice their objection. A property owner yeah. who owns 150,000 of the tree, or how many people are in the town, gets to make the decision. No, and that was an exception. That's what we, we came, thought about at the Conservation Commission, that you know these, these are the people's trees. These are not individuals' trees. Right, and then, and, you know, and how we're going to have the Beautification Committee decide what kind of tree <laughs> I have I have oversight on that, and everything's going to have to be vetted through me, anyways, before we go anywhere. So, um, well, I don't think we've heard a conclusion to this yet, but I don't. I don't, I don't think the mayor's going. I know the mayor's not going to be anything. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know. <laughs> It's ironic, but the town that owns a piece of property on East Broadway, okay, that's overgrown like crazy. No, I okay. can't get to her. She's busy. She's been begging that was it? for that to be cleaned up. Yeah. And nobody will go out to take it. Five years. She wants the whole thing cleared, but yet the town's not as far. Well, in, in relation to the to tree removal, it's going to fall into the category of, uh, of to be continued. To be, we'll give it a park in places. We'll give it a place to, to park this army of destruction. They're just chopping stuff down and driving away from it, and then who's going to pick it up? Well, that, that, that was, like, that was part of it. It's not like it's cost them any money. They're regulated. They get 80% profit or 10%, whatever it is. Whatever their operating expenses are, we pay for it, and they get their and bill. And bill. All I can say is this is this is uni not unique to Stratford. I know it's been uh, highly publicized for Stratford. Fairfield? Fairfield is probably the only exception. Their tree warden, right from the get-go, yeah. he's not the tree warden. They have a full-time tree warden. Um, I don't know his name oh, offhand. It's not your character, but I guarantee it. You do this in Greenwich, I will, I will bet you the situation, again though, like Greenwich, is, the situation is very different. They probably don't have trees planted in planting strips that are two inches wide. And, well, no, no, but what I'm saying is the, the town-owned planting strips, I don't know what their town-owned planting strips are like. They might have, they, their trees might be very well set back from the road and the high tension wires. And Greenwich has enough money to put their wires underground at this point. Which is another issue. So, well, it goes beyond just the tree removal, in my opinion, as well. It's the way they were trimmed. Uh, I mean, I, I, I was going to take some pictures of them. The one on East Main Street is the greatest one. It's so. Well, if you don't want the tree removed, we'll trim it. Put it on property value, anyways. According to this, 
Yeah. You gotta take everything with a grain of salt that's in any media. All right. No, I, and there's a lot there's of people, lot of that, people aren't happy. that aren't happy. I, I, I happen to be one of them as well. So. No. <laughs> All right. Call deep. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah. I do have one quick question. By the way, all of this wood that's laying on the side, is that free for anybody to take? Yeah, go take it, trip the ball, break your leg, and get some of the pounds. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, that's exactly I have, I, have okay. I, I know people that want to know because they burn wood, and they'd be willing to come in with, with a hook if they even have one. Mm. It's just to take the wood for firewood. I could ask you why. I could ask. I could certainly ask. If you need to say something, you got to leave. Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. So here it is. Motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? <laughs> Mr. Faye second. Sure, yes. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, these trees. Did you do need a motion to adjourn? <laughs> we did it already? <laughs> Tom, you, by the way, I'm Tom, sorry. you seconded it. <laughs> <laughs>